Arizona Democratic Congressman Ruben Gallego announced his 2024 bid for U.S. Senate. His bid sets him up, sets up rather, a potential battle with one of the state's current U.S. Senators, Kirsten Sinema, who's switched her party affiliation last month from Democrat to Independent. So here to discuss is CBS News political director Finn Gomez. Um, Finn, really good to see you. What see more you. do we know about Congressman Gallego and his campaign for U.S. Senate? Uh, yeah, Gallego, who jumped in the Arizona Senate race uh, this past month, this yesterday, is a, is a five-term congressman from Arizona. He's a, a Marine Corps combat veteran who was deployed to Iraq during some of the worst fighting. He was uh, chairman of the Bold Pack, the campaign arm of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus that saw an historic increase in Latino lawmakers during the, the November midterms and has generated some momentum because of that. Uh, he's also, uh, according to his campaign, he's re received encouragement and support from progressive Latinos and, and young voters about his bid and in, in, in jump into the Senate race. Uh, he has previously told me that this this coalition of Latinos, young voters, and and uh, and. Um, Progressive is what he needs to to win in Arizona, but it, uh, I just spoke to one of his senior campaign advisors who says that they're also going for the uh, the the the, the uh, legacy because Gallego is a is a is a uh, combat veteran, like I mentioned, a Marine who fought in Iraq. Uh, they're also going for the the military vote uh, in Arizona, which ha which holds a lot of sway in that in that battleground state. Um, but his entry could make a, a, a somewhat of an awkward three-way three race between Gallego uh, and uh, a, a, you know, a Republican candidate and, of course, Cinema, who left the Democratic Party um, uh, right after they won in uh, December, uh, after the uh, Georgia Senate runoff. Uh, just she, a few days later, she, she switched uh, party affiliations. Uh, she is an independent, but still caucuses with the Democrats. Uh, so it will be uh, an interesting race if, if she decides to jump in. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Finn, you mentioned uh, cinema. Any response from her camp, and what challenges does she now face? Uh, yeah, not yet, Vlad. Uh, she is, n and she has not announced uh, her intentions for 2024. Um, you know, she drew the ire of the progressive base of the Democratic Party in Arizona and nationally for being a thorn in the side of President Biden and some Democrats when when she, uh, you know, helped stall legislation. Um, um, for her own principles, she's she has this. You know, again, she's she's had a very independent streak before she even uh, switched affiliations. But um, you know, it puts it, the Democratic Senatorial Committee in, in an awkward spot. They are they are of course the campaign arm of the Senate Democrats uh, because it puts them in this tough spot. Because you know, it's about who will they support, who gets a campaign fundraising from them. Um, they so far have not really said how this will will play out. They're all many, it's including Arizona. Are waiting for uh, uh, a Kirsten Cinema to make a decision on whether she's going to run for re-election. So Virginia Senator Tim Kaine, in the meantime, has also announced right. last week that he's going to be seeking re-election in 2024. What more do we know about his decision and how it could impact the battleground state? Well, Emory, that exhale you're hearing is a sigh of relief coming from Senate Democrats on the Hill, because mm -hmm. Kane's decision to run for re-election immediately helps Democrats in defending this seat in this in the southern swing state. If if Kane, the he was who was a popular Democrat in Virginia, who uh, also was of course Hillary Clinton's running mate in 2016, if he did not run, that open seat could have been very, uh, very you know very competitive. Uh, so uh, with his um, re-election. Um, intent, uh, it, it, it definitely, uh, you know, makes that, that swing state uh, more solidified or it gives the Democrats better chances. Hmm. So how is the Senate map looking for 2024, Finn? Uh, will the Democrats be able to keep control of the upper chamber? Yeah, Vlad, that's a great question because you know, as you know, as mentioned, like if you look at Virginia, um, the the landscape is currently a tough one for Democrats. Um, you know, overall, Democrats are defending at least 23 seats, uh, while Republicans would be the would be defending about you know, would be defending 10 seats essentially. So, um, but uh, you know, but th there was also this prediction early last year uh, about the midterms and about and about the Republicans winning back. Uh, the Senate during the November midterms, which of course uh, did not happen, and Democrats actually ended up winning um, a majority. So, uh, but uh, currently in January 2023, the the, the landscape does um, a little bit of uh, a little bit steeper for for uh, for Democrats uh, in defending territory than uh, for Republicans. All right, Finn Gomez, always great to have you, my man. Thank you. Thanks, guys.